Everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Samson. Hello. Yeah, hello. Um, Samson, I'm a go. Great. Samson, for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Okay, so like I said, I'm Samson, I'm a go, and I'm a Nigerian. I'm a Microsoft MVP. I'm kind of passionate about Microsoft technologies, specifically um, .NET technologies, C Sharp the desktop framework, and also the web framework as well. Well, it's great to have you. And I know that I I think, I'm trying to think back through, I've got through almost 200 of these interviews. I think you're the first from Nigeria that I've talked to. Oh, interesting. Uh, so that's exciting. Do you know how many MVPs are in Nigeria? Um, I think it's within around 16 to 19. I'm not sure, but I think it's within that range. Yeah, Microsoft doesn't make it easy to go in there and search for, like, by country for MVPs. It's, you know, they're so protective of the information, rightly so. Uh, you know, and so it makes it difficult unless unless every MVP from the region puts the country name in their description, it may not find them. Uh, but so, so you're like a brand new MVP, too. When did you receive your MVP? Oh, I received my MVP award some months ago this year. Yeah, so relatively new. So what was your journey to becoming an MVP? Like, did you hear about it? Is, it, it were you working towards it? Was it a complete surprise? Okay, uh, it wasn't really a complete surprise. I, it was a surprise that I got it, you know. Although, so how it happened was, I, I'm currently a Microsoft Lensing Ambassador. So I'm a Microsoft Lensing Ambassador in my school. And like up in the Microsoft Ambassadors program, we have like a group, a Nigerian group, and one of one of the predecessors there, Olumide, he was a Microsoft MVP. So at some point, I saw a message where he talked about if you're interested in becoming an MVP, I should reach out to him and tell him that I'm interested, and then you know fill out some form. So I did that, and after doing that. You know, I had to also put down all my contributions that I'm, I'm aware of, or that I actually did. always a always a painful process to go through that every year. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could imagine. Yeah. So, you know, I had to bring down, suss out all these links, blogs, articles, events, some events links. You know, then, and at that time, I was also kind of. I was, I got into this um, .NET space kind of new, like since last year. Mm -hmm. So I found the technology quite interesting. The design, the language design specifically, it seems quite cool. And, you know, going through the docs, uh, sometimes I, I see some errors and I'm like, no, they shouldn't be how they should be written, or maybe there's an error. So I'll make a pull request and that's the first one got, and I was kind of happy about it, you know, contributing in, in a small way, little mm -hmm. as as I can. So um I at some point I started doing this and it's like um uh, one of the maintainers kind of he's kind of noticed my contribution. And mm -hmm. sometimes when when there's a need for maybe a little help to do something, it might just put me down like um like he would just tag me to the issue and be like, hey Sam, can you work on this? And in doing that, I'm not like, I'm not, I'll not call myself a pro pro, but in doing that, I kind of learned more about the .NET because I have to like look at the issue, research, know what is wrong. So it's kind of it was kind mm -hmm. of like a learning and contribution process for me. So I did this several times and um prior to dot dot net seven getting to the ga that general availability the first release the main release um a lot of issues and contributions i was like tagged so i was kind of 
getting myself up to speed to the latest updates in the .NET space because I have to research from the article that was written about that feature and then make my own contribution to it or correct some things or write sample code in a new future. So, so it was really interesting. I was kind of engaged in the production of or the spinning out of new features. So um, at some point, Rick asked me if I was interested in it. Rick Anderson, that is the name of, mm -hmm. uh, of the person. Rick, thank you so much. Olympia, thank you so much. So um, yeah, I told him yes, I was interested. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't have into mind that he would reach out to me and ask me if I was interested. So I told him yes, and he asked me to put down like some of my contribution, the links to it. And I did that. And he also he also nominated me. So I had like two nominations, one from Olumbi Day and one from Rick Anderson. So I after a while, one day I just got an email that, hey sir, you've been nominated and you're now an MVP. This is a link for it to click to get to know more about the program. And I was kind of excited because I didn't really know. I mean, I'm kind of new to this space, but mm -hmm. I think the whole open source contribution and engagement kind of spread my process. Like I was kind of on a faster, faster learning process because of the whole engagement in the new futures. And it kind of made me seem like um, a professional, a professional, but I'll not call myself like a professional, mm. but you get that feel. So yeah, I was, I was very excited about it. And that's how I got to be an MVP. And up to today, sometimes Rick, like I think last week I made a contribution to the .NET documentation. So I'm still, I'm still in the .NET space and um, yeah. the language design is, is really, really cool. I've, you know, I've had like some experience with some languages, but C Sharp seems to really stand out in terms of design. Well, I love the comment that you made too. That's like, well, because none of us are experts. Now, I mean, nobody's an expert on everything. And there's obviously there's some things that each of us we have a lot of depth on. We're confident in the answers. But I find the same thing. Like now, somebody will ask a question, and I I do a lot of a AMA, so ask me anything, recordings and videos and and panel discussions and things around that is, but I learn so much by, like I see a question, talk through it logically, kind of break it down into its components and uh, you know lean heavily on others and their knowledge. But then I go and do research. I do a little, you know, searches and try to, and read through and try to understand and try to answer the question. Cause a lot of times there might be a technical answer but the real world, like what the person's actually trying to do might be slightly different than the technical answer that you find. Yeah. And so trying to put that into real world context, I mean, that's where, you know, like, like you, know, I've, I don't spend as much time in, I, I've not, you know, changed any documentation. I do my contributions a different way, but that's an excellent way to get started within the community is exactly what you've done is take that real world learning answer questions, fix mistakes, um, you know, because a lot of that documentation now it's, it's crowdsourced. Uh, and so, you know, they, Microsoft needs the input from people and those real world experiences. Yeah. And I think, I think the fact that the kind of open source.net that's made it become more popular. And that also, you know, sped development of making this cross platform. So you can use .NET now in Linux, you can use it on Android, mm -hmm. you can use it on the Mac OS platform. So I think, you know, from the onset of making it open source till now, a lot of changes and developments from the community has actually been applied to the .NET ecosystem. Yeah, and that's really sped it up. I, so I was uh, I was at Microsoft a few years back, and I remember what some of the pushback internally uh, around the open source movement. And so now, as you look at it, and Microsoft thankfully embraced it, and uh, and and started participating in that. And that approach. I mean, I'm over in the SharePoint collaboration space, and so much of the documentation that's written and the products are modified are driven by what happens 
in those community discussions. And so you have like the patterns and practices, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, all of the, 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 the groups, all of the subgroups that are part of that, that are working on documentation and solutions and things that are out there. Again, a applying real world experience to the products, making them better across the board. That it's, I, I'm glad companies have learned the power of uh, you know, uh, of the crowd the, to crowdsource around solutions and getting feedback. It makes solutions better. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes when I go to some of these platforms like Quora, yeah, like Quora, you might see some some answers negating .net, use of .NET, because some people still have this old mindset that .NET is totally proprietary and is not open source. So Sometimes when I see those comments, I just comment a little bit and say, no, there have been changes to the .NET ecosystem. It's kind of open source, so everyone is free to contribute and the code is open, so you can like go through and analyze the code and the documentation as well. Yeah. Well, as a newer MVP, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've already had people come up to you and say, hey, how do I get involved? What? How can I kind of follow in your footsteps and do that? Any recommendations for somebody that has an interest in doing that, or what do you tell people? Yeah, yeah. So um, I've I've seen that also on our tech our school tech group. Some students have asked such question, and mm -hmm. what I would tell them is to contribute to the .NET ecosystem. Like the MVP program has lots of sectors like you have the azure you have the mobile you have the ai you have the power platforms so yeah like there's a whole lot of categories for you to fit in but the first thing you can do is to try to and you don't also have to be like a professional for so long you just have to contribute in the smallest way as possible you could mm -hmm. write articles based on a particular technology maybe power platforms or you could um host events Hosting events is also a, a good way of, you know, contributing to Microsoft technologies, Azure or whatnot. You could also, you could also answer questions on some of these um, questionnaire sites like Stack Overflow or Quora. You could help people out. Even on GitHub, you could help people out there with their issues as well. You could also contribute, like me, <laughs> you could also contribute to their documentation or helping to write out um, code samples for new features or release in a new um, .NET version, and I think these are some of some of, these are some of the ways you could contribute to becoming an MVP. Then you also have to like find out or reach out to an MVP to nominate you or a Microsoft employer employee to nominate you. Yep, that's the I know that's that's hard for some people who are out there contributing you know it it does have to be visible to somebody and so that's why you also need to do some networking and get to know that's like why i asked the question like how many mvps within like your country your home country and in the region around you and then start reaching out beyond that as you find an area where you're passionate about who are the leading voices, the experts, the MVPs, the regional directors, the Microsoft personnel who are actively writing, speaking, blogging, solving problems, answering questions. And don't be shy, reach out and connect with those people. Always like on LinkedIn is a great tool to reach out to people and say, hey, you don't know me, but I read a lot of your stuff. I'd love to connect and stay in touch and that kind of stuff. Like that's the way that you do it. It's it, it, but you you have to have those connections. And so as you're then contributing, you can then reach out to those people that you've made connections with and say, hey, I just wrote this article or I just added this content piece. What do you think about this? Do you have anything to add to that? That's the way that you can kind of gently raise your visibility uh, so that you know when they start seeing the 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 volume, the consistency of your contributions, and then you could say, hey, I'd, I'd really love to get your support in becoming an MVP, or they might even reach out without you asking yeah. and, and yeah. say, I see this, and, and and have you considered this, and have those conversations. But it, it you have to make those connections. Yeah, exactly. You definitely need to. Networking plays a big role. Networking can you know transform someone's life. 
in ways that you can't imagine just by you know just saying hi to i mean it could lead to a lot of new new fields or new outcomes in your life it's funny that we we can get in and dive into all these technical issues but the hardest part for the most people is that reaching out and <laughs> making the connection saying hello so that's why I like to leverage, uh, you know, LinkedIn for exactly that. You know, it's like I reached out to you. I'm saying, hey, brand new MVP, you know, don't know him. We're not yet connected. Say, hey, would love to uh, to talk to you and learn about kind of your path. And so it's a great way. This is one of my ways to uh, uh, to to reach out and get to know people from around the world and hear their different stories. Yeah, I also see that you're like a tough time MVP. That's for like tough years. And that's really a lot. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing it. I know. It's like, well, it's it's all about just covering the the white walls because, you know, it, it, it's it's that's that's really it's it's about the decor and the house. No, yeah. it, but it's uh, I'm very grateful to have been you know one the the community and a lot of MVPs say this and I say this all the time is look I'd be doing the stuff that I do whether or not I had the awards on the wall. Because I'm just I'm passionate about technology. I love connecting with new people, learning about new new things. I'm a connector personality, so I will. I might be you know somebody will ask a question and be like, you know, I do know somebody in that region. I should I know Samson. I could connect you with them, and so I do that all the time. Um, I'm I'm terrible at, re at remembering names, and so by doing something like this, having this connection, it helps me as well. Um, I never forget faces though. And once we've connected, yeah. um, but then to make those introductions. So I do that all the time. And so one, one thing is that if there's anybody, anybody watching and reach out and if Samson's not responding to you, you want to connect with them, you can always come to me as well. I can do an introduction. So always happy to do that. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Samson, really appreciate you taking the time, a few minutes to uh, to get to know you. Hopefully, uh, I hope to get over to your part of the the world soon. I'm trying to uh, to get over to Africa and visit a couple different uh, countries this next year. So it was nice. tentatively nice on on on, on, you know, on the me. plans. Yeah, but hoping to as things start to open up again, yeah. get back over there. I mean, you could hit me up when you come over to this side. For sure, I will. I will definitely do that. Well, thanks a lot for your time. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you.